Our guest is a magnificent actor, you know, from Masters of Sex, Frost Nixon and Prodigal Son on Fox, the tremendously talented, the beautiful Michael Sheen is here. How are you, Michael? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing all right, thank you, James. Now, what part uh, of the world are you in right now? Where are you calling from? I'm in the Welsh part of the world, which is called Wales. Yes. You know it well. I do, I do know. You're in Port Talbot, right? yes? I am. I am indeed. I'm surrounded by sheep and now llamas. I noticed there were llamas in the field next door earlier. Uh, what I'd give for that to be the issues of my day. <laughs> if only. Are eh? you, how if are you, I what's it like? Boring. What's it like over there? Are you following the news of what's happening here in America at the moment? How yeah, is it in oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, when the, when the video footage of, uh, of the murder of George Floyd came out, I mean, you know, obviously people were absolutely appalled here and watching the reactions to it. And it's just, you know, it's just kind of mind blowing what's going on there. Um, and, you know, listen, for what it's worth, I just want to say I, I stand, you know, and support whoever's fighting against injustice and racism and, and inequality. And uh, these, are, these are extraordinary times. There's a lot for people to deal with here. Well, I, I don't know, people may, may not know this, but, but I do just because of how long we've known each other. You're a very uh, politically active person. In fact, that was, that was part of you moving back to your hometown in Wales was to be more politically active within your local community. Um, what are some of the issues that you're working on there? Uh, well, in the, the last few years, I've, uh, you know, I've heard more and more people talking about problems around debt, around getting into problems with high cost credit and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So I started working on uh, trying to uh, end the exploitative high cost credit practices that were going on, especially around communities that had you know, uh, uh, less uh, less financially advantaged communities than, let's say. They sort of prey on a lot of communities. So I've been working on that, working on the collapse of local journalism. You know, a lot of communities just don't feel like they have a voice and don't feel like they can hold power to account or get reliable information. So I've been working on that. Uh, working on homelessness, mm. issues around homelessness and social exclusion. And last year brought the Homeless World Cup, which is the soccer tournament. Yeah. That happened once a year, brought it to Wales to Cardiff and I'm glad that I've got a chance to publicly thank you for the support you gave us because that that meant a lot we were in trouble for a while and you were one of the people who, who helped us so thanks well, so I much was, for that. I was thrilled to to do so but I explained to people what the Homeless World Cup is because I don't know if people know quite how much of your own financial security really you <laughs> You put into yeah. this. Explain what it is, why it's important, and then and then I will I will explain to people what you did okay. to, to keep it on his feet. Because I when we talked about it, probably around this time last year. It right? was. It was, ex it was yeah. exactly. It was almost exactly a year ago yeah. that we sort of talked about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the homeless World Cup is. It happens every year. Uh, it happens in a different country each year, and essentially you've got um, people from all around the world, different countries around the world, who've experienced homelessness or social exclusion. Uh, who play football, play soccer. Uh, there are sort of uh, small grassroots organizations that organize leagues and, and yeah. games for people. Um, and I'm as affiliated with uh, one here in Wales, which is how I got involved. Um, and so the Homeless World Cup, teams come from all over the world to take part in it. Yeah. Wales represents with a men's team and a women's team. I'd seen it a couple of times. And then I thought, why not bring it to Wales? So we, we put in the bid, we won the bid, we got it here, 500 people from all over the world representing their countries were coming to Cardiff and with about, uh, about six weeks left to go, we suddenly discovered there was no money. The money had disappeared and there were all these people counting on coming to Wales for this transformative experience. Yes, that was the thing. Completely. It, it changes people's lives, you yeah. know, it, it really does. Um, and so I, there was no way I could let it not happen. So, uh, so I did whatever it took to, to make sure it happened. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing. I really do think that what you've kind of gone home to do is something that lots of people think that they'd like to do, but very rarely ever make that jump. And I genuinely applaud you for everything you're doing in your life on top of your extraordinary career. And since I've seen you, you've had, you've had a, a, your daughter. Yeah. Been born. Now she was born. How old is she now? Eight months old. She's eight months. She was born September of last year. She's What's eight months it old been now. like in this period of lockdown with a newborn? I can't work out whether well, it's utopia or a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's um, it's 
it's sort of an amazing experience, really. I mean, she gives us the routine. You know, I think a lot of people have said that, right. you know, they, yes, they find it point. very difficult to have a routine. So, of course, you know, the baby schedule is what rules the roost. So that has helped us. Um, I mean, I'd always, I'd always um, wanted to have this time off anyway, you know. So I'd, I'd finished work just before lockdown started, really. And uh, I was always going to try and keep this period free to, to just be with my family. Um, and so, so it hasn't been as disruptive in that way for me as it has been for a lot of people. But it's been amazing to just, you know, be here at home with her, with the baby, with my partner, Anna. Uh, something that happened the other day that was quite shocking was that I, uh, you know, all, there's only a few houses around here where I live. And they all have sort of, we don't have numbers, we have names on houses. And they all sort of have the same name. You know, it's sort of a lot of syllables, a lot of consonants. It's sort of that kind of thing. <laughs> okay. And uh, so a package got delivered to me by mistake. So I was going to walk up the road just to take it to the house up the road. It's only a couple of minutes. And I thought, I'll take the baby with me. So I'm walking literally 30 seconds up the lane here. And I can see her looking around like that. And then she started just freaking out. And I, I had to bring her home. And I realized, of course, she hasn't been out of the house. Yes. From the beginning of lockdown and she it was just she can't remember what it was like before and you know yeah. so i just that really shocked me i realized wow well that's why i always used to think when when our son max was born and he was a baby sometimes he'd fall asleep in our house and while he was asleep we'd put him in the car seat and like drive to my parents or whatever and he'd yeah. wake up and he'd scream and he'd be, and my wife would be like, what's wrong with him? And I'd be like, I tell you what's wrong with him. He fell asleep in a house and he's woken up in a car on a freeway. It's, it's witchcraft. It's yeah, witchcraft. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Now yeah. let's talk about your brilliant show, Quiz, which I have very, very much enjoyed, but obviously I remember oh. it for very different yeah. reasons. Um, tell us what it's about and what drew yeah. you to the project. Well, uh, so it's a, it's the story of uh, something that actually happened over here in Britain on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah, the, the amazing uh, quiz show game show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. So it was the it was known as the scandal of the coughing major. Yes, there was a guy who came on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire who was called Major Charles Ingram, and over the course of two episodes, um, he won a million pounds. He won the million. Won Amazingly, the million. in the first episode, he was all over the place. He, he didn't seem like he would know. And then, of course, you know, he, that episode finished, had to come back for the next episode. Yeah. Strangely, second episode, he's sort of amazing, coming out with answers from, like, nowhere. Yeah. And, uh, and he won the million. But the people who did Who Wants to Be a Millionaire were convinced that he was cheating. And they, they believed that someone was helping him with the answers from the audience by coughing to give it to like hint what the right answer was. So this became a huge deal in Britain. It was it just was like a massive It was the biggest story in the country. Oh. In the days before social media, of course, oh, as well. Sure. I mean, imagine what it would be like now. But back then, it was a massive tabloid scandal and all this kind of stuff. And they were found guilty. Obviously, they had to give the million back. Um, and it sort of, you know, it kind of ruined their lives in all kinds of ways. Yeah. But the weird thing is that I remember this happening. I think I thought I remembered it. I thought I watched the episodes when it came I out. Said but the, the episodes were never thing. broadcast. I said the exact same thing. <laughs> I couldn't believe that that episode was never broadcast because I felt like I could remember yeah. being with my parents in our living room watching Everyone it happen. Does. Everyone thinks they saw it. And what people did see was a documentary that was kind of rushed out yes. after it happened to kind of capitalize, I suppose, on all the, the furore around it. But the documentary was made by the people who made Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. So it's very much coming from their point of view. For sure. So people sort of have a memory of, oh, I remember that. Oh, yeah, and he definitely cheated. So this story, in a way, is not, it's not necessarily saying that, you know, they think they're guilty or, or innocent, but it just says there's a lot more to this story. And there is a lot more to this story than I mean, people thought. It's been one of my favourite shows <laughs> of the year so far. And your performance, oh. as always, you're playing the host of the show, Chris Tarrant, yeah. which is the latest in a very long line of you playing real people many of whom are still alive today yeah. and you do it in a way where if i'm honest i, I think it's quite annoying now because <laughs> you're not alone Jake. you're too good at it that's the truth <laughs> of it do, do you ever worry when you're playing a real person that they're gonna see the work and wouldn't enjoy it or that their families well, wouldn't like yeah. it does this play I'm on terrified. your mind every time i've done it you'd think I think people think that I'm like really comfortable with doing it. I'm terrified every time. I'm convinced 
right up to the point where I'm actually performing as the character, that people are not going to accept it. They're just going to say rubbish and that the actual person is going to take me to court or something. I'm absolutely terrified by it. Well, your performance in quiz is absolutely...